So, Mike, uh, how are you today? I'm very well, thank you. Very excited to be here, a guest on your new podcast. Excellent, good to hear. Um, so, to begin with, can you tell me uh, a little bit about what you do? Yes, I'm the Teacher Engagement Manager here at Macmillan Education. So I'm part of the Teacher Professional Development Team and my job is all about training teachers and helping teachers develop. Okay, and what did you do before you started at Macmillan? Uh, well, I used to work and live in Italy, in Milan, so I think I took um, a fairly typical route. I moved there many years ago as an um, EFL teacher, thought I would stay there a year, maybe two years, and then I left at the end of last year after 15 years in Italy. So I worked as a teacher then as director of studies and for the last few years I was um, director of a private language school in the centre of Milan. Excellent, very interesting. And in those 15 years, yeah. starting as teacher and ending up as uh, director of studies, how do you feel the role of teacher changed? Um, well, there have been loads of changes in teaching. Perhaps one of the biggest changes that we saw in Milan was this, and I'm sure um, many of your, your listeners can uh, agree with this, that uh, we moved from being virtually 100% adult school to increasing numbers of kids every, every year, till it was, uh, when I left, it was the, the majority of the students were young learners. So that was a considerable shift, especially as most teachers had done their, their initial training in teaching adults. I think technology has changed a lot. So when I first moved there, I was still taking the cassettes out of the bag and carrying my um, cassette player around to various companies. And 15 years later, everybody had iPads. We were all hooked up to uh, flat screen TVs. I think when I moved to Italy, the word podcast probably didn't even exist and here I am being interviewed on a podcast so lots have changed. Having said that, I'm not sure the role of teacher has fundamentally changed. I think the teacher is still there to help students learn. So some of the tools have changed, um, perhaps uh, the makeup of the actual students have changed but the job of teacher I think is fundamentally the same as it was 15 years ago. Absolutely, so the role remains fundamentally the same. Uh, recently in ELT though, there's been a big debate about uh, the origins of teachers, um, specifically native teachers versus non-natives, and I understand when you were in Italy, uh, this was something you were involved in changing and bringing forward. Can you tell us a bit about that? Yeah, um, so when I started teaching in Italy, it was a fairly big school, and I would say the vast majority of the English teachers were native teachers. Most of them, like myself, over from England, often on uh, you know, fairly short-term contracts, perhaps they'd be there for a year, two, three years. When I became Director of Studies, I made the decision to open up the recruitment procedure to non-natives as well as natives. I think the pressure previously had been the kind of sales and marketing um, pressure of saying to your students we've got only native teachers. What I felt was the best thing for our school was that what we wanted to be saying is that we had the best teachers. Not just um, teachers who spoke the language as a first language but teachers who were qualified despite their yeah, origins. Yeah, so well, I mean all the teachers we took on were qualified but I think we were missing out on a lot of talented teachers by focusing only on native teachers. Um, there, were, there was a bit of resistance from the students when we first uh, brought the non-native teachers through, but I have to say the feedback at the end of the courses was overwhelmingly positive, and, and perhaps later we can talk about why that might be and what mm. some of the advantages are of a non-native teacher over a native Absolutely. teacher. I'm, I'm quite proud of the fact that when I left the school it was probably a 50-50 uh, percent mix in the, in the teacher's room of, of native and non-native teachers. Yeah, very much so, very much so. I, I guess one thing would be that the students respect people who've gone through the same journey they went, they're going through themselves. So they would understand the teachers who are teaching them 
who are from Italy in your case uh, would have learnt English and would understand the difficulties and the problems that they would have. Uh, yes, I think that's true. I think they also respect the native teachers for other reasons, perhaps for the culture they bring mm -hmm. into the, the, the classroom and maybe the life experiences. I think, looking at it for, uh, for a second from the other point of view, I think the teacher is often better able to understand the struggles that the students are going through. Mm -hmm. uh, on a very simple, fundamental level, especially with newly qualified teachers, they already understand the way the language works and the grammar because they've had to study it and learn it themselves. Absolutely. I, I remember, for example, when I qualified, the biggest challenge for me in the first two years was, was actually understanding the grammar that I was teaching. Mm. So I think there's a kind of a, 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 an advantage that they might have in terms of knowledge. I also think there's an interesting career path of people who are non-natives. Uh, often natives are going abroad to experience another culture. Uh, in my case, for the football and the pizza that was available in Italy at the time. But what we notice with non-native teachers, it's been their lifelong passion to teach English. Mm -hmm. So perhaps from when they were kids, they wanted um, to teach this language. And I think um, you'll know and your listeners will know that having a, a really motivated, passionate teacher can make all the difference. I want to be clear, there are plenty of passionate uh, native um, teachers as well. and. Um, I think that would be my conclusion. It's all about the quality of the teacher and yeah. their understanding of the students and their passion for the job, mm -hmm. regardless of whether they're native or non-native. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, let's move on and uh, talk about the future of ELT. And if you could make one key change to the world of ELT uh, from the perspective of either a director of studies or your current role, teacher engagement manager, or even going back to when you were a teacher, looking forward, what change would you like to see uh, take place in the world of ELT? Uh, wow, that's a big question. That's a, um, I think, uh, despite all of the technology that's coming, um, and we keep seeing articles about adaptive learning, and the role of um, mobile technology in the classroom, I still think that the teacher is fundamental to the, the, the success mm -hmm. of the language learning experience. So I would love to see uh, in the future a shift in the perception of the role of the ELT teacher. I think perhaps in the past people have viewed it as a uh, a poor relation to real teaching, to mm -hmm. teaching in state schools, secondary schools, uh, universities, um, and I would I would love to imagine that in ten years' time, the the world of ELT and ELT teaching is considered as highly as other branches of education. That teachers are treated very well, and and. I'm sure this will be done well with your listeners, but paid very well, <laughs> and yeah. uh, that the, 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 the role of teacher has a much higher status. Absolutely. I suppose the key question is how to, how to bring about that change, whether it's through more immersive training, moving with the technology of the time, but um, looking at key issues like classroom management, learner management, um, planning, making sure qualified teachers are rigorously tested. So when they, when they enter their careers, they're looked upon as proper teachers rather than kind of a fly-by-night um, stepping stone career, yeah. as it were. Um, and I, I think this whole idea of continuous professional um, development is crucial mm -hmm. um, to, to lifting the status of the EFL, EFL teacher. Sadly, in many realities, um, a teacher is hired, put into a classroom, and then they're never trained, never observed, left to their own devices uh, for years. So I think and standard um, causes stands to drop somewhat, or stagnate, or mm -hmm. you know that the, the, I think if you're going to turn around to the wider world and say we are 
dedicated professionals, then they're going to be asking questions like, well, what do you do to keep learning? What do you do to keep developing? Which is where we come in, of course, or where you come I, in, for sure. Hopefully. Brilliant. Well, it's been a pleasure chatting to you. Thank you very much Thank for your you. time. And uh, best of luck with teacher development. Thank you. Good luck with the podcast. Thank you very much.